That's true. From the 28th, you said three o'clock. Any, any questions or concerns? Yeah, I have a question. Um, any questions or concerns? We have a motion to approve. I will move to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Nancy, uh, you're up. I should have put the final wrap up of the right construction project. So the construction is pretty much done. Um, if you look out of the children's area, the keyhole area still has a section to be poured, concrete, etc. We've had some minor punch list things, but we're pretty much done. <coughs> Excuse me, I have to sneeze, but it's not gonna happen. Um, that doesn't mean that there won't be something in the future because it looks like within the next couple years, the upstairs will be carpeted. Some folks have, have looked at it from the carpeting angle. We know that there are cracks upstairs as well. There are substantial as the ones down here, but some of them are substantial enough to be repaired. So whenever they take the carpet up from there, there will be some repairs, but because they aren't, they don't appear to be as severe as the ones down here, I think we should be able to do that when the time comes to section is going to not close to do this. And also we've been looking at some of the more modern actual library movers that will, they use a hydraulic lift system and they come in and they can lift up entire ranges of books and move them and you know, you do the carpet things and then it just pulls them back down without having to take the books off the shelf. So that would save a ton of time and effort. As that was, uh, even with movers down here, it was a lot of reviewing for staff. So anyway, um, we're pretty pleased with the results. At least, thank goodness, we actually got new carpet and not just repairs that no one can see, as people have been uh, very positive about what they've seen, at least. We uh, made a huge effort when we were putting things back to not put everything back. We had, if we'd accumulated too much furniture over the years, we had a lot of old furniture in here that wasn't doing much, so we did a lot of consolidation. So if you, if you do walk through, you, you hopefully will notice how much more open and airy it looks in here. We don't intend to put a lot of that back. So I, it was when I first came here, that lobby, it just drove me crazy. It was so cluttered that I mean, people were having a tough time navigating and um, with a little different mindset because there was that big counter and then those those stanchion things with the ropes and all those things and i said well can we what do you think you know it's really crowded can we take these out and i said well then patrons will walk right up to the desk and i said okay <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, the current staff does not have that mindset so, so i think it's much more open and that's the idea is to have patrons approach the desk without all those barriers in the way. So uh, we just still have our plexiglass up. I don't think it'll be up there for very long. So um, it's all going well with construction. I think not much not much of anything left to report. So well, congratulations for bringing thank it back you. online. I mean, uh, you yay, yay, yay. 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 Thank you. How did the opening go? Oh, it went really well. It was so, I mean, Seriously, I don't know who is more, more close to crying with us or the patrons, <laughs> so sometimes both. Um, we did kind of a low-key opening. We didn't do a soft opening because we did, you know, it was out there. But uh, I was glad we did it the way we did it because it was a nice steady flow of people. We're still on a shorter schedule for the next couple weeks till we're back fully staffed with another building custodian, etc. But in six hours, we checked out about 2,600 items. and. We had a good thousand people in, and uh, it just went really well. So people were thrilled to be back. Um, we only had two complaints so far, and that was concerning the fact that we have not put out all of our little toys in the children's area because we really don't have a good way to sanitize them between every patron right now. And since kids can't be vaccinated, we're not putting them out for a while. So we only had one person get really mad and say, "But that's why we come here." <laughs> so I said. We do have books, <laughs> all kinds of other things. But for the most part, um, folks have been really happy coming in. So um, we've seen a lot of new folks, a lot of folks that moved to the area during COVID. So I mean, we've been closed for almost a year and a half outside of those few months we were partially open. Um, so we've seen uh, multiple new families coming in, which has really been nice. 
one family, they were so enamored of the library. They said they moved here from Brooklyn and they said, oranges near us were really dark and dingy. So, so they really, they really liked, they really liked coming in. Um, we'll be doing virtual programming probably through August still because we are had to, we always had to plan our programming out ahead of time. We already planned and recorded a bunch of virtual story times, etc. We should be back to full hours after Labor Day, uh, if not before. And that includes programming, meeting room, uh, rentals, etc. So study rooms are available now and those have been well used already. And our temporary computer lab is upstairs in what used to be called the unquiet area. We have a whole plan to move our computer lab. That's been a little bit laborious because we first have to get rid of that compact shelving and that's been a real pain. So we've had several folks who want it and then they don't want it and then they want it and then they, and then they don't want it because it costs a lot to move it. And so we're still trying to get rid of that to make room for the computer lab. But the opening could not have been better. So we forgot a couple little things. Like we forgot, um, first day we were open, someone came running up to me and said, the phone message. So I ran back and read the phone message and said we were closed. Oh. And we forgot one computer. We forgot to order a computer for the new team desk in the new team area. But other than that, the only thing else was good. Say more about staffing. How are you, how Staffing, yeah. um, we are now in a building custodian. Our, one of our custodians retired mostly due to health concerns through all of this. and. Um, it's been a pretty tough process. We've, we've offered the position to a couple of people who didn't pass the physical tests, their, their ability tests, not, not just a regular physical. So we've now offered it to another person. I hope that everything works out fine. If, if so, we should have it by the end of That's the key to extending the college is we, that we were, we were, position. We were, no, we were down by six or seven positions. So uh, we've now, we're now in the process. You know, we've hired them and they're starting <laughs> soon. So we did so not. You've got to fill even if they they haven't have started have started, started yet, but but we have offered those positions to them. So, um, for example, we didn't know we were going to have a team section until pretty late in the project, and so then we figured out that we didn't have enough children's staff to actually staff the desk in that area. So we hired some folks for that. Um, we had two people move away, one retire. So we now have we now staff to staff our. Uh, Computer lab space, etc. So we're almost we're almost fully up and running. Is the security person back? Yeah, Jake's great. He, Jake started actually here right before COVID. Yeah. And he, but he has done he's amazing. He's done. He like withdraws all of our books that we that we you know read out of the collection. He's been doing like everything besides keeping an eye on perimeter of this building, everything going on at Roosevelt Park, etc. So he's fabulous. Yeah, that's a permanent spot. It is. We had to fight for that, but he is a full-time person. He's ex-military. He's incredibly organized, and he also has a huge. Uh, whoops, sorry, it's Catherine. Hello, East. Um, he's done a lot of the. He's done a lot of the more compassionate safety trainings that we have offered, and he, we just really like the way that he interacts with patrons, especially those folks experiencing homelessness, etc. So he's a great resource. So um, he will be doing a lot more um, security training for our staff now that we're open, just to make sure that everybody is up on how to interact positively with all of our more difficult patients. We are seeing some new folks in that we haven't met before. We've only had a couple minor issues, and I think now that people understand how things work, I think it's going to be really fun. So um, we always go at it with a with positive attitude. <laughs> Assume that everyone is our library patrons, unless put in other ways. So, many teams since the new two years. Yes, that's been great. great because we actually have a lot of teams. Um, we never had we had a lot of team checkouts. We have an excellent team collection, but we just we had one little tiny seating area by the window crammed behind the shelves for them to sit. And because of various things that happened during construction and the, the teen area having too much stuff in a small area, you know, not load, the floor is not being low dry enough and the scheming opportunists that we are, we talked to, they, we heard the engineer discussing, you know, oh, we need someplace to put part of this and we're like, oh, just take those cubicles out, just take those those nasty little carols out of that virgin team lab. And so they did, and so it is all redone. Um, 
it's redone. They did, you know, the construction project covered the actual walls. We don't have the budget for the rest of it, but we scrounged up some dollars here and there. So we are shelving in that area just the teen nonfiction, the graphic novels, and the manga in there. The rest of the collection is going to be is still shifting from where it was, but we'll have you know video gaming and computer use and other team or team book discussions and um, we actually had 45 teams I think applied to be on our team advisory board that's amazing this time so we have a lot of teams that really want to use the library and a few of them I just can't even tell you they walked in and they're like this space is for us <laughs> so we just did not have a good place for teens to just be and I think it's super important to give teens a place to be that's positive they go I remember having problems when I was a children's librarian with teens at one library where I worked and my husband finally looked at me and he said, Nancy, the really bad kids don't hang out in the library. <laughs> and that's, that has stuck with me since then. And he's right. And we have very good teens that deserve a space. So that's been one of the best things about our updates is, is providing a space. We had to get staff stools because some of the, because our shelving is a little taller than our other shelving room. We have some tiny tiny ones that we can reach them out. But other than that, it's, been, it's a really good space. Congratulations to the entire business. We're just happy. Can I ask a couple more questions? You may ask that. Sure. No. Paula Stone Williams will be speaking at the council chambers. Mm -hmm. What are you doing in terms of media with that? I don't know. I can ask the folks that are in charge of the program what they've done. Are you recording that? Do you know? You mean to find out for sure? Well, oh, that's I adult. want that program for OPM. <laughs> oh, that's fine. So, oh, that's yeah. fine. I'll ask the adult services librarians who do what their plan is. And I see you've got a thing called Textile Librarian. Oh, we had that. We we've had that all during COVID, pretty much, or most of COVID. And this is a product that I had used before years ago in Illinois. And basically, but that was when texting was just starting to be a thing, but. As you know, there are a lot of folks that really don't want to talk to anybody on the phone and they don't really want to text them. And so we get, it's through a company called Mozio, M-O-S-I-O. Uh, we bought the original little company called Text of Librarian. Mm -hmm. And basically that's what it is. And people text us, I finally had to turn the noise off because people text us morning, noon, and night. <laughs> My phone would give me notifications every time. So wow. so all of, the, all of our librarians and some of our support staff are signed up to answer questions. And you can answer them from your computer. You can answer them from your phone. Um, it's kind of a whichever library gets to it first, or is that really, if that's your field of expertise. But basically, they can text us any question. They can say anything from, from I just read this book. What should I read next? To, to hey, can you check my account? But you know, I, I don't know what's overdue. To whatever. So. It's an app. It's an app. Are you, it's, are you tracking ahead. numbers at all? Yep. Yeah. So you know how many? Yeah, not on top of my head. But we well, I know, but numbers. that would be yeah. a useful we've had, thing. We've had a lot. I can, I got that feeling, that's yeah. why I asked. So that's a that's a tool for like leveraging these guys. For sure. Money. So that's what I'm like. <laughs> it's a lot of fun because a lot of, you know, we get a lot of kids and a lot of teens that do text us. We get adults too. And it's just, you know, once people find it, they tend to use it a lot. So when we also, we drew attention to it by thinking that we have a little bingo board that's for summer reading, mm -hmm. and that's one of the one of the tasks you can complete for your bingo is to request, make a book request through te using text library. Right. So that that brought a whole lot more uh, aficionados to us with that service. But it's been a, it's a lot of fun. I'll be interested to see if the numbers stay the same now that you're open because yeah. I remember telling people. People, moms specifically, were like, "Yeah, I don't know what books to choose yeah. online. I would go and look at the books and pick them out for my kids. And I was like, well, you can text them. People and text them. <laughs> you know, I, it's interesting because people, I'm looking to see what I got today, but people text us at weird times. Sure. Too, because you can. Looking, <laughs> there's, a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of them. That's what I usually hear. Let's see. 1242, 1245, 12, 1241, 1242, 1245, 1250. Those AM? Those were PM, but then I had, let's see, 1110. 
there were, there were a flurry of them when in the morning, 8.30, 8.38, 8.42, 6.56. So, I mean, people text us. When they think of it. When they think of it. Yeah. So, it's just nice because, you know, especially right now, we're not open until 10. So, mm -hmm. people will text us at 6.30 a.m. or at 10.30 p.m. So, yeah. And we don't necessarily answer things right then, but sometimes we do. Yeah. Yeah, since it shows up on people's phones, a lot of times if it's a really quick response, we just answer it. And since they're at any one time, at least a dozen of us that have it up, uh, people can answer it really quickly. So it's fine. You're doing a podcast now. Book yeah. Chatter Podcast. Yes, my librarians last year are doing a Book Chatter Podcast. So nice basically they pick a book every month and usually they pick something that's a little bit um, you not your average bestseller, but often they pick something that's interesting, narrative nonfiction, and and they put out the information that this is what they're going to talk about, and we have extra copies, etc. It's kind of a book room, but it's a, a book group podcast. So we have several of our librarians that you know talk about the book, talk about the author. I think they had at least once where the author told them that book is cool. It's audio only. Mm -hmm. So far. It's easy to add a camera if you want. <laughs> it's fun. You're doing them over at LPM, right? I think they are. Because we have that. I'm pretty sure they're using I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure because, yeah, I'm sure that a few of them have told me they're going next door to do it. Yeah. So, I'm just looking for ways to promote the library, too. So that's what this kind of stuff does. So. That was just something else. I, I, I did like, welcome you to this group. <laughs> <laughs> I told you you'd regret it. <laughs> well, I, I don't regret it so far. Okay. And um, last one is you, you have Wi Fi hotspots now? We have 89 of them. So 89 yes. of them? We check, actually, we check out 80 of them. Nine of them we usually send library people out with the on, but um, we check out almost. All 80 are checked out almost all the time, and we have holes. And then you don't have enough. Excuse me, I'm going to get out of the cars. I don't even know where 818. Where's 818? Oh, wait. Oh, it's happening. Oh, that's right back. I'm out. Who is that? Well, it's great to have someone else that. Uh, about lobby cups. Oh yeah, that's well. That was. I mean, you were there. Or were you? There? You weren't there when, when I got interviewed, were you? No, I no. I were. was in the Yeah, they said one thing. What's the one thing that the library needs? And I said money. What? <laughs> that's it. I, we have to figure out how to fund it. You're thirty percent below the average library for the same number of people in Colorado, and we have to find ways to fund it. So that's going to be a focus. <clears throat> so. And wherever it comes from, it doesn't matter to me as long as we can just get as much funding to the library as we can. Interesting. I think I'm on the preparation of the budget, which is the next item. Yeah, that's what's going on. I did talk to Nancy a little bit about how uh, you and I particularly talk to city staff members fairly often about different stuff. So, you know, we're pretty plugged in, but we can. We can we can get Harold to actually listen, yeah, for instance, you know. Um, Scotty, Scotty. Hey, 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 see, I was switching next to you. Yeah. You've gone from one thing to the next today. I know. I know. Yep. Yeah. Can I answer? What was your last question? Can I Do we? Answer? Get, it was more of an observation that you need more hotspots. That's all. Well, we do and we don't. Yeah. The hotspots themselves, we we have um, the ability through. An organization, it's a charitable organization called TechSoup, to get yep. 11, 11 free hotspots every year, the actual devices. Yep. But it's the it's the uh, service contract on those devices that costs more than the devices. Do Don't we have an internet provider here in town? I've heard of it. Uh, next slide. We okay. do. But no, no, I mean, they, they offer reduced, you know, much reduced uh, internet service to folks, but it's not free. And I think it's still a misconception that a lot of people at the city have told me that everyone can have an X-Lite. Mm -hmm. We have folks who can't have an X-Lite. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I said, these have, these have, at any one time, we usually have about 20 molds and we have 80, all 80 checked out. So, there is a need for them. 
And some of the folks aren't folks who don't have internet. We've had folks that take them on road trips. I was going to say, for sure. Because if you're in between spots with reception, yeah. for example, oh, yeah. we've had people who say they love to take them in their motor homes when they go on road trips because they can get reception, et cetera. Um, it one day where my husband called me and said, hey, our, our internet's out. I'm going to go on home. And I thought, that will be more. Do you, so you cover the internet as well, the cost we of the internet. So that's the devices themselves with the discounts we can get are only about $65, and then the main, the, the service contract is about 120 each per, but per, year. per year. So that's, you know, 96, cheap, that's 90, it's it's it is, but you know, in, in a cheap library budget, that's 9600 bucks. So, yeah, so we have to kind of look at how many we have, but um, we'll see how many we have after, we want to see how many are checked out at a time once we're open, yeah. even once we have folks who are able to access the library. We showed a lot of folks how to use them so that they could go use them at home. So they're very simple. If you've had a few that haven't come back, that's you know kind of the cost of doing business. So well, I, I was gonna the only only council agenda item that I think is maybe of interest in this group next Tuesday night is approval of an IGA with the school district mm -hmm. uh, based on the grant that the school district got mm -hmm. and work with the next life. Um, and I'll and I'll be curious. I won't be there Tuesday night. I'll be out of town. But um, to the degree that there is the need for hotspots, mm -hmm. based on that grant, uh, mm -hmm. about a million and a half bucks mm -hmm. you know, from in two in two different mm -hmm. pots of money, uh, with the intent of ensuring uh, access to everybody in town. Yeah. And in some cases, at no fee or at no no charge. That would be wonderful. And you know, maybe maybe we won't need. <clears throat> Need as many as that at some point. So we didn't want to. Have you been dialed into any of that? A little bit. I mean, we don't want to over. We didn't want to over invest either because we think that yeah. there are some opportunities that are coming. And we just figure it's all it's all for the it's all for good. Yeah. I mean, if we can. Well, there's a lot of infrastructure money that's going to be thrown at this in the next two three years. I think that's fabulous. Yep. So you should you should give our fair share. Yep. Mm -hmm. But people like them. And they were they were COVID grant funded to purchase up the edition, so we just have to make it. Can students check them out, like young people, or is it adults only? They can. I'm trying to think. I think it's 60 and above that have to check them out. We also have some Chromebooks that are available to check out. So that's 60 and above. When St. Brain goes online, do they provide? Chromebooks, is it, my design is right, so I don't I think know. They, yeah. use their they have iPads. Yeah. They provide their devices. Yeah. They don't necessarily provide the internet. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, you know, that's, that's the thing. You know, as we check out the Chromebooks, we are pairing, we are trying to juggle the amount so that we pair up a Chromebook with a hotspot. Right. Because I, I know this from experience, we got ton of Chromebooks given to us in California, but of course people take them home and they expect that they are internet connected and they're not. So we well, don't want people to have that experience where they get home and this computer doesn't work. You know, so we, we will be um, probably, you know, they'll reduce the number that we have, reduce some of the 80 because we're going to be pairing them with the Chromebooks, but that's, that's probably okay. Okay, before you move on, Catherine, this is Scott Conkers. Yeah, we've had before. Yeah, yeah, he he, he attended the chiefs, our new board member. Oh, great. Okay. Nice to meet you again. Yeah, again. <laughs> so you, uh, you want to jump in the budget then? Yes. I don't know if I have my, many updates from last time. Our budget was submitted before the last meeting. We did a, um, a meeting with Harold and some other city staff. We had a few questions, nothing. You know what it's getting for out. council review? You know, I'm, I don't. I'll have to look and see. I thought it was sometime in August, but I'll look and see. Well, it has to be coming up pretty soon. Yeah, right? I was like, doesn't it? It does. It does definitely. It was my understanding none of your wish list items made no, the final but I didn't, cut. No, but not the ones that we talked about later. We are not finished with But we're not done yet. Yeah. No, and actually, and Harold was in a couple of days ago, and he chatted with me about a few of those things we talked about. I'm just telling you, we're not finished. Yeah. Yeah. Who's Harold again? Harold is Harold Dominguez is the city manager. Oh, okay. So, you know, he came in and we kind of walked through some of the, we walked through those items. So um, these are not finished. The other things that we asked for were we asked for some supplemental new positions for the library. We asked for pre-processing money. We asked for some more money for the library. Um, we asked for some more money for the library. We asked for some more money for the library. We asked for some more money for the library. We asked for some more money for the library. We asked for some more money for the library. We asked for some more money for the library. We asked for some more money for the library. We asked for some more money for the library. We asked for some more
wish list items included potentially the sorter, although me and I talked about that and that those kind of projects are kind of nice to be able to do with a lump sum of money like we have in the Mosher Fund. Because mm -hmm. it, there are multiple different aspects of, you know, here's the machine, here's the installation, here's the construction that goes with it. And they can get really complex if you have all these different pots that you have to go from. Um, we discussed children's shelving. Our children's shelving is, it's all part of a board covered with cheap veneer mm -hmm. that's peeling off. Um, because it's part of the board, it's super heavy. Uh, part of the board's, to my knowledge anyway, heavier than, than most of your, your wood, your, you know, just solid wood panels would be there. And the mover said, don't ever move it again. <laughs> it was literally falling apart when it was again. So that would be a larger wish list item. Um, we had a couple more things we talked about. We talked about tables and chairs for the meeting room because one person can't move them. Anyway, it's a lot. So looking at that, looking at our computer lab, our construction of our computer lab, a lot of glass panels upstairs. So we have a lot of potential things going on as soon as we get rid of that contact shelf. But budget numbers are in as far as how we're doing with this year's budget. We're doing okay. We, um, you know, it's still half the year. Comparable to the last year. No, I mean, it's, it, nothing is, it's still weird enough. It's still happy year of COVID. Mm -hmm. And so there are some areas where we've really overspent compared to what we would normally spend and some that we've really underspent. And it's just, it's just COVID stuff. So, I mean, how, we, we buy a lot of sanitizing products. Oh. So, you know, so there are things like that. There are a few new furniture things that we had to do in conjunction with construction when things fell apart in our interior area and things like that. Um, just some, we purchased some safety items. We kind of had time to review safety in the building, so I always have. So are you asking for more money or less money? Actually? The last year, actually, we're asking for more. You know, we crossed one hundred thousand people, right? Yes, we're I officially did. a city. Oh, we're we're we, yeah, because the initial count was what ninety nine seven fifty, right? Just, right. Yeah. Just and then, went over. But then, yeah. And a hundred thousand. When you become a city, you're one of about four hundred and some odd cities yep. in the United States. So yep. yeah, it's actually it's not as many as you think. It's wow. a serious. Yeah, it's not many, and it's a serious designation change. For yeah. Yeah. Do you see this might not relate to the budget? May did any updates on prospect here? Yes. Okay. So I mean, it's coming back. All right, for sure. Okay. So, and um, we talked. I had a meeting today with the with the directors, and so um, we're definitely bringing it back. Okay. Even though it's costing, it's really exorbitant compared to what we should be paying. But uh, it's a service. So, yes. Um, Prospector will be coming back. Um, I'm trying to think what else we talked about today. I'm just curious about the COVID supplies. That's not covered under some separate. Fund. Some of it. Some of it was. Okay. But good. some of them are not necessarily like cleaning supplies. Some of them are um, kind of peripheral supplies because of COVID oh. that we had to purchase to allow people to work from home Got it. that weren't Got it. covered and, okay. and you know individual like some things headsets and things that we used to share we don't share anymore right and so you know there were some things we had to make individual that used to be shared things throughout so okay. it's not it's a lot of little nickel and dimey thing that just adds up but it's not going to continue to impact your budget no there were just some strange expenses from, yeah. from being a COVID year. Oh yeah. So, and things like things like the text library, et cetera, that we added on to be more accessible. So they aren't without cost. Any more questions on the way? And uh French, there was no no meeting that they will meet next report. Wednesday. Okay, Tim, you had mentioned you Yeah, I just the, the one item, you know, I, as I looked ahead, uh, agenda. Uh, council agendas, most of those items are perfunctory, you know, to get into things, leasing meetings and whatnot. But the one that, that this group would have an interest in is the IGA uh, with the school district that, that really expands uh, access and at, at reduced cost, in some cases, no cost. But the intent is to ensure that every every family in Longmont who, who wants access has access through next slide to the internet. So. How does that work with the school board not following the city office? Or sorry, school board, school it, it, district. It's school district wide. Oh, it's district. Yeah. In fact, one of the two. The big, so including the parts that are in well. Yeah, there are two resolutions, yeah. one of which is the lease of a of, of, um, space, right, to, to service those parts of, 
the school district that are not in one. So. The only other uh, specific council related item that, that I just want to comment on, uh, since we're in a, in a public meeting and it's on the record, uh, there were some comments made in a council meeting on June 29th about uh, projects. They were referred to as projects. It's comments referred to projects. One of which was the a library district as a project, as a pet project on some council members. Um, so whoever watches this, um, I, I just want to be on the record that we, we have not yet received uh, a fees the second phase of the feasibility study. There is no project. There might be a project. There's I, I assume. I'll have an update on that. I know you will. I assume that this group will, will be the recipient, at least the first audience, of a feasibility study. <clears throat> this group will determine um, uh, what your priorities are and what recommendations you would make to council. Uh, I'll be on the record uh, tonight and, and into the future, but I'll support whatever recommendation you make because I know it'll be thoughtful, it'll be focused, it'll be the appropriate use of that study. Whether it's a library district or you know some other approach, who, who knows what that might be. Um, <clears throat> uh, what, the, the, what I don't want, what I wouldn't want to do, is whatever comments I make here, anyplace else. And I think the only conversations I've had about the feasibility study are with, with city staff or in this room, mm -hmm. uh, with members of this board. Um, I just want to reiterate: no projects, pet or not. Mm -hmm. Uh, are, are on the board right now or on the table for the library other than getting it back up and running and, and working through the routines that have to be worked through to make certain it gets resourced the way it should as we were re re referring, referencing uh, the budgeting process. Um, so there's nothing else council related and I, I feel like I need to share if there's anything you want to share with me. Uh, how about the arts and cultural district? Do you have anything new on that? Well, th that was one of three projects that were referred to. Oh, well, uh, no more. Uh, the other was the was the pool and ice facility that was framed again as the ice palace. But, um, it wasn't biased. Uh, the question wasn't biased. I, it wasn't so much a question. Or your question? No, no. Oh. No, the comments were, when I'm referring to weren't questions, they were just yeah. statements. Um, uh, public and letter Yeah, public and letter statements. I could guess. Um, and um, guess. there was a reference to the voracious appetites of elected official council members um, that have such voracious appetites for tax revenues to spend on pet projects, like the Ice Palace, like the Cultural Center, and like the Library District. Um, uh, so, for the record, uh, there is no cultural center project. We have a feasibility study. I have been in a couple of meetings uh, with uh, the leadership of Lapai and the, and the city manager to talk about what are the next logical steps. And I think what the next step is going to be to, to retain the services of another consulting firm that actually they're, they're, what they do is help municipalities or jurisdictions take the results of things like this feasibility study and turn it into an action plan and identify what decisions have to be made. They've worked with municipalities across the country on issues like governance uh, or, or oversight of a facility who's going to manage the facility, business planning, um, and, and who are the kinds of experts that you want to bring in potentially um, to be part of a plan. But that's all out there, right? The first step is going to be to hire the consultant to take a look at what, kind of where the feasibility study stopped and what now needs to be addressed, like creating a group to provide oversight, uh, having a plan to maintain the facility, a business plan for booking talent and all that goes with that. Fundraising that goes along parallel to, to all of it because it's few venues like what's been envisioned in a feasibility study uh, can put together a business plan that generates sufficient revenues to call out uh, cover all the costs. So the performing arts group will, will always be challenged with fundraising. I think. But that's not a project either. Right? It, it'll become something someday, but I don't know when that someday is and exactly what the nature of the project will be. I will, 
I'll be on the record again that there was a reference to a, a $157 million project. That same number was mentioned when it was presented in the council meeting. Uh, it, I, I, at no time has anybody, I, I, I don't think, assumed that the city was going to take, going to bite, swallow that whole elephant as a metaphor. There would be bites of it that the city might take. The city should have skin in that game, I think. But it's going to require a capital stack that involves fundraising uh, and the private partnership and different kind of financing structures, in addition to whatever the city may, or the, the residents may be asked to do uh, in terms of the benefit sales tax and property tax. But that's way down the road. Uh, and you know, how much of that the city takes on, we'll have to see. But I don't, for people to assume that somehow, because a feasibility study laid out a vision and kind of parameters for $157 million performing arts facility, that that's somehow uh, they're going to be the city's obligation to fund. It just won't happen. Well, from my perspective, I think a lot of the things that the Arts and Cultural Center endeavor is going to look at are things that we as a board should yeah. understand and determine whether we want to follow those footsteps yeah. or, or tread in a different direction. But I think we need to understand them yeah. just just to make intelligent decisions. So there, there are we'll, we'll keep uh, I'll keep pumping you for you, you should and there then there will be a relationship mark between whatever comes from this feasibility study has to be considered in, in relationship to the to the feasibility study on performing arts and culture and conference center, um, and um, and the and the, the 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 reality that the city is going to need uh, more office space, it with no place to go really for office space. Um, there, there, the the interest in a, in recreation facilities is gaining momentum. Right? I mean, there were there was a question after that. Pool Ice facility failed on the ballot. So now what? What's next and when? And we haven't answered that question. But I can tell you there's growing energy in, in our recreation community. And at some point in time, that's going to become part of this conversation as well. So, um, you know, without without trying to put, you know, I don't want to get too far in front of over my skis, but there will be a conversation at some point in time about what's the highest and best use of this facility. This, facility as part of a campus sure. and then what are the other possibilities if this becomes the potential site of additional office uh, of a city complex and then thinking about where would you want to put a library right that is a 21st century facility that serves the community the way it should be so I don't know where that conversation ends up but I but I know I know where it's that it's gonna it's gonna come and it's gonna be as a potential uh, a couple of big questions for this community to consider. So good, good. But picking up on the comment Scott just made, uh, crossing the hundred thousand citizen mark, was that in line with the? Are you ahead of, in line with, or behind the projection? Yeah, good question. To the build out. Yeah, with the number. Number. Well, you've sort of been reading and hearing. Uh, there's a narrative that's growing about long months growth and you know what, what's out of control and what's not. I, if you want to take the time, I can I, I can tell you what's happened over the last twenty years in terms sure, of how just, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, we Yes, and, no, or and, maybe and, and, and why, and why, why we are where are we are in terms of housing needs. Are you trying to say the short version? <laughs> 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 uh, I find him informative. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know he's short version. It's like going to the well. Uh, <laughs> 116,000 was the was the number right in envision long line in 2035. Oh, in 2035. Yeah, in terms of being on 116,000. Yeah. Now, when if you were in the conference chamber when there were conversations about uh, how to secure water and the firming project with Jimmy Hollows, and which is now the, that lawsuit's been settled, we're now moving forward. We just sold 55 million dollars worth of bonds. 42 million of that's going to go to fund the Chimney Hollows project. That secured enough water to, for for this for the build out at 125 miles. So there's two numbers that you know have been discussed publicly. But Envision Long wants 116,000, and that, then then you say, well, what about what if there's more density and you had more housing units per acre? You know, could, could that go north of 116,000? The answer is yes. But the highest number I've seen is 130. Uh, that's the number I recall yeah. is 130. But I don't, know, I don't know if we're ahead of that number. 
And, you know, I don't, I don't know. Say whoops, or, 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 or I've, I've, not seen, like I've not seen. I've not seen. It is probably there, and I'm just not connected to it. it, it or, or estimates year by year. It's very difficult. No matter what those would be, just the approval, the permitting process that the proposal has to go through. Uh, there is virtually no way to predict from from date of application to date of permit, and then given supply chains and labor shortages and whatnot, how long it would take to actually deliver, right, product uh, to the marketplace. There's just no way to predict that, honestly. I, I can tell you projects that were, were in my mind, no-brainers that are three years and have not yet been through in that process. That one might have expected two years ago to show up as housing stock that hasn't, you know, that hasn't been permitted yet. Because so, this building though, in 93, this, this said that in the future, it would hold up to 68,000. So, yeah. in 93, the projection was we might get to 68,000. Well, it's, yeah. it, 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 it's also when they tie in with the feasibility study sure. because if the feasibility study comes back and says, you know, you can only do 110 with what you got and what you may get, then that may cause us to rethink some of those things. Yeah. So. Th th that's a relevant question. Uh, those are all relevant questions. We're going to get a feasibility study and to look at Envision Longmont and what's changed since 2016, I guess, when it was approved uh, in terms of the projected build up. That number between 116 and 130, the number 125 was, was in terms of uh, firming, firming, Jimmy Hill's firming project. That difference, a lot of that difference, uh, you, would, you would account for in terms of density. Because in Envision Longmont, and with our land code, we encourage more density, especially we invited more density along business corridors. Um, and so when right now you read about where are all those apartment complexes coming from? Well, it was in the master thing. Yeah. Right? And, and the truth is, um, today, 53% of the renters in this town are what, what are, is called uh, housing burden. Meaning, meaning, 53% of these people, the people renting in Longmont today, pay more than a third of their income for rent. Right, and for many of them, it's way more than 30%. It was a significant number that was over 50%. I saw that. <laughs> well, it is. So, um, that's a lot. So, um, the reason rents are what they are is you've got households that have increased housing, right, mm -hmm. at, at a rate. That creates that supply or that demand, right? Um, that the supply product. Yeah. Anecdotally, I, I'm a landlord and I just put a house up for rent that I bought eight or nine years ago for one quarter of what the value of the house is now. And the rent is, the market rent is three times what it was then. Wow. And That's 10 years? Eight years. Eight years. Wow. And, okay. and what's disturbing to me is I'm getting, I have. It's been on the market for one week today, and I've had 50 people apply, and, and I'd say over half can't afford it, but they're more than willing to yeah. try to commit yeah. to 50, 60 percent of their income to rent, and I'm like, that would be that would be uh, severely burdened. That, yeah, I'm going to that part too. What choice do they have? I know. This is so frustrating. Because it's a house, you know, it's perfect for a little family, but it's like little families can't afford it. Yeah, people need healthy. It's really frustrating. And they still need to eat. They have to eat for themselves. And Longmont's considered more affordable. So, yeah. You know, I think the population will just end up going further north than further east. Well, it's gentrifying fast, is all I can say. I mean, I had a couple from Minnesota come in that you know, they were 24 years old, but they had a hundred and fifty thousand dollar income. Well, because one of them was a trust fund baby. Okay. So they drove up an A9 LE and they went, drug dealers? Oh no, <laughs> she's got a lot of money in the bank. So, wow. but that and that's the kind of person that I mean, it's like Boulder's. We are in Boulder 25 years ago. Well, I, what Boulder did 25, well, 35 years ago was was create a, an, ar an arbitrary limit on housing. Kind of. We haven't done that. Boulder, if you look at our growth over the last 20 years, there haven't been many years that we've been, we've been between one and two percent, right, in terms of our growth. Yeah. So it's not, people talk about out of control growth. Year over year, it, it's, it's pretty controlled. And I, 
uh, again, for the record, uh, if anybody cares, as you read about uh, managed or smart growth, uh, in this town, developers, they submit their applications. The process grinds on. I mean, they, they are subject to incredibly uh, uh, thorough scrutiny in terms of what their proposals are. Sometimes to the point where you have to wonder uh, it, at what point does it stop? Because it goes on and on and on. Uh, but they they pay for every penny of infrastructure. You don't. They do. And eventually it gets deeded to the That's city insane. or dedicated to the city and the city maintains it over time. But they build their own sewer lines and water lines and sidewalks and street lights and all that stuff. They pay that. And in the process, they pay remarkable, remarkably steep, generous, or you know, for them expensive fees for things like new park development, water and sewer. So people ask, what benefit is it to you if somebody builds a home somewhere in Longmont? Why would, why would you want to see somebody you know, building a home since it simply uh, impacts your quality of life? That's, that's the assumption. Well. I could give you the for the $23 million we've collected in new park fees over the last 10 years, what we've done with those funds in building parks that you and your kids get to enjoy that somebody else paid for, right? With their with their housing fees. Same thing's true for water and sewer. It mitigates your rates, right? So people argue growth doesn't pay for itself. I want to say the facts don't, don't bear that out. Growth does pay for itself. Over a 50-year period of time. Is, is why we need more density along Main Street and you know uh, our business corridors because that's where you are able to generate revenue to service you know the, the maintenance of infrastructure over a 50 year period of time. But there's a narrative growing right now where people have strong opinions and no information, and um, you know and I, it has some serious implications for the city if we if we if we if we hear from the residents don't turn us into Boulder. And the argument that I hear, I hear being made by some right now is the quickest way to turn us into bold is to set arbitrary, yes. unreasonable caps on housing prices. Everything he, he does real well, he would do real well. You own a home. Um, it's just a whole bunch of people who have never quite achieved quality of life are never going to achieve quality of life in the long run. So, isn't there a uh, mandate with only development of a certain percentage needs to be affordable housing at this point? I'm sure it's not high enough. But. Well, think about think about on the on the continuum of affordable housing to attainable housing to executive housing or luxury housing. Right? <coughs> affordable housing uh, are, are, is housing for which people qualify for subsidies. Right. right? Um, nobody in this room would qualify for a subsidy. You you earn less than sixty percent or less of area median income in order to qualify as a household mm -hmm. to qualify for housing subsidies. The twelve percent is tied specifically to affordable or subsidized housing. Mm -hmm. There's a whole other continuum of housing that the, ter the term of art is attainable. Mm -hmm. right? And then you say, well, what's that mean? Well, it's all tied to area median incomes. And, and it gets to be kind of a goofy formula. But think of it as this way. Housing that's priced between $350,000 and $500,000. That's or attainable. $400,000. I, I, mean, <laughs> I know, I know, I know it, it blows your mind. But yeah. it's in that price range. Right, mm -hmm. for working families that would qualify if the household earns enough to satisfy all the costs of housing without spending more than 33% of their income right. on housing, right? Now that assumes they don't have to pay for childcare, right. and they can get transportation. <laughs> they can and, come up with a down payment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's, the, that's <coughs> that housing stock, or that housing, that product is not part of the 12%. But the, we, we, the councils, never set a target, right? Mm -hmm. If you were to ask, so what is the target for affordable housing? The answer is, we haven't set one. If you were to ask, why not? I would have an, I have an opinion, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm probably I'm not sure right now. Right. <laughs> well, if 53% of people can't afford their housing, it seems like whatever the difference between 12 and 53 is, 39, right? It would be that number. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to ask you to cover that after the meeting okay. Sorry. and push on uh, if everybody's okay to the feasibility study. Okay, we had a meeting today. Uh, we were delayed a couple weeks. Our consultant had babies, so um, also we had to wait until the contract 
found its way through the city purchasing, which took quite some time, about two months. So as soon as the contract was completed, we're able to start working. Right now we are um, doing mostly data compilation. So Amy Seeger, who's our consultant, is just a dynamo, and she gave us our marching orders for all kinds of info that she needs that we provided for her and some more things that we haven't provided yet and, and you know some of those are information on the stem team project information on the lapai um, feasibility study and uh, we linked her to the vision one lot so she's she's definitely up on these other things that um, are potentially happening concurrently with with whatever we end up doing with the library um you know to to piggyback on to what Tim said, you know, one of the main goals in this second phase, the feasibility study, is financial modeling. But it's, it's looking at the data that was compiled by the first consultant. It's filling in holes that we saw that we didn't think that were flushed out enough in the first consultant's project. And then putting a cost to option. It's looking, you know, first, first thing that a consultant will do is really establish level of service standards. You know, looking at peer libraries, looking at this library over time, looking at area libraries as well, and looking at those level of service standards for square footage, for staffing FTE, for number of programs and number of attendees, for uh, volumes, print volumes, and online resources, for technology, et cetera. And you know, what are those standards? And, and then looking at, at uh, how do we measure up to those? Are we, are we below you know, usually you divide those into a kind of a minimal and then an acceptable and then an aspirational uh, goal. And you know, you're, here's here's how here's where we have to be if we want to be um, minimally adequate. Here's where you want to be if you if you want to be adequate. And here's where you want to be if you want to be more than adequate. And so, uh, you know, that's a lot of number crunching. So she's working on that for what we've given her. Um, and then so. so that sounds different though than where this was originally set. That sounds more like how much money do we need, as opposed That's, to that is that is part of this. So that is part of the second part of the study. Is but first you're looking, but because there were supposed to be several scenarios. There are scenarios. Okay. I didn't get that yet. So okay, so how? But you have to have these level of service standards to start with, and then after that, you look at what are what is basically every type of model that's legal to do with a library in Colorado. So, and that's where- I like the most legal word yeah, there. Right. Do we yeah, actually consider like illegal things? Is that right? No, but I mean, there are things that, but different states have different rules about what yeah. libraries can constitute. So anyway, um, just looking at those type of models and you know, looking at, and then looking at what do those cost? You know, what, what would thing, what do things cost to, and status quo is always, is always one of the options that you look at. And that would include, um, if the funding were to remain at the same level, would there be a degradation of service over time? So, and, and in these levels, so in these levels of services, you know, what would suffer? So, you know, if you left, if you left everything being the same, but things become more expensive, you know, would you have fewer staff members, fewer vol fewer volumes, fewer offerings of programs, etc.? Is so, that a rhetorical question? <laughs> no, but it, but you have to put numbers to it. Okay. So. You know, looking at just, I mean, district is one option. Um, hybrid is not really necessarily one option. There could be multiple types of hybrids. And, you know, those may or may not exist in Colorado right now. The closest nearby hybrid or semi hybrid would probably be Hoover River and Fort Collins because I don't know, and I don't know how much they're contracting back to the city now. Initially, it was a hybrid in that. They became a district, but they contracted back with the city for HR, payroll, uh, facilities maintenance, et cetera. So there may be other types of hybrids. Um, she said definitely she's not looking at you know, one type of hybrid. And when we do some larger meetings with with folks from this group and some others, and you know, Kim from Museum and other community stakeholders, um, you know, some other folks may have some ideas for hybrids that, that we haven't thought of yet also. So definitely looking at those multiple options um, and then looking at, you know, once you figure it all out, what's an action plan? How would you make this happen? So uh, like in my, my other project that I did with her, 
in Bellingham, you know, they, they looked at different things. They looked at should the city system merge with the county system? And you know, did it make sense financially? Did it make sense? And actually, what they figured out is it probably made sense financially, but the city there is really blazingly liberal and the county is super conservative. Mm -hmm. They didn't feel like philosophical the two could mesh mm -hmm. and, and become one system. So mm -hmm. they decided to, they actually did um, put up tax measures, I think, just right after I left. Um, I know, that the, I know that the library has been completely gutted and remodeled, so money came from somewhere. So they were planning to put up um, a dedicated tax measure from by the city for the library. So you know, different things can happen in different places. It just depends on what are those standards and what makes sense. Um, it is that hundred thousand dollar mark, dollar, the hundred thousand population mark um, is one of those things you see often when you read things about. Uh, how many libraries or what size libraries have to be or what libraries have branches um, it is somewhat unusual to reach unless you have a very large library to reach that hundred thousand hundred thousand mark and only have a single <coughs> centrally located library unless you are in a super dense area and not at all widespread but you know there are other things to look at obviously that we looked at somewhat in the first phase of this um, you know you, you don't spend as much time as some people think Think is necessary looking at who doesn't use the library because you know that's a tendency in a lot of studies to, to really concentrate almost solely on, on who doesn't use the library and that's kind of counterproductive. Um, we don't care about people who don't use the library because they don't use the library. Sure. We care about people who don't use the library who want, who want to use it and can't use it because of some kind of barrier. It's, it, it could be a language barrier, it could be parking, it could be transportation, it could be any number. So we have we have a few holes in that info from the first study that we're looking at. So uh, we'd like a little more in-depth demographic data that was presented by the initial the initial consultants. So uh, we're we're in it. So. So now you got a start date. Do you have an end date? I do, and I can and what I, I did bring it with me tonight, and I can send. We revised the schedule because it did take a while to get things up and going with the contract, etc. But I do have a nice little graphically represented schedule that I can send that I just got. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. So that's been, oh no, um, she's very schedule oriented, and we will be having probably weekly check ins. So, last time we, we, you mentioned that there might be um, stakeholder meetings? There will be. Has anything been. No, we're talking, to, we're talking, we're talking, we talked about that. We talked about that today. So, uh, literally, this is the first time since the contract was approved went through the whole process that we've been able to meet because that just happened last week this week like really recently so um we have a whole list of potential dates which we'll probably be sending around a poll for stakeholder meetings so just historically mm -hmm. remember how this all started right yeah i do and i remember original dates and we are way past those we original sure dates that we would have something to look at. I mean, like way past. I mean, you. If you look at COVID, we we missed those dates before COVID by a significant amount. We weren't working with this consultant before COVID. Right, but the other ones were supposed to have stuff. Yeah, the other ones. The other ones took a really long time. Yeah, it wasn't. They did not. Yeah, they did not meet deadlines. Yeah. But. So. So that was the reason that the other the other consultants didn't meet deadlines. It wasn't the city, not no, it was the consultants. Okay, it was not the city. And then COVID shut us down. Pretty much. Pretty much in doing this. Hard to meet with people. Okay. No, but now we're back. Okay. Is the demographic data that you need? Does that mean there has to be a new round of surveys? No, they just. Or? I mean, the, the demographic data that they incorporated into the first part of the. Um, of the feasibility study was just kind of the generic boilerplate stuff that you can find online, okay. et cetera. And there's, there was no, there were no extrapolations from that demographic data to say that, look, since X amount of your folks are Spanish speaking, maybe you need this level of level service of for Spanish speaking yeah. people. It was just data. Okay. It was just, here's how many people speak Spanish in your town and, and nothing else about what you might want to do about that. I mean, that was the overall flaw in that. In general, that was a, that right? was the, lack, the lack of critical yeah. thinking about yeah. the material. So they're just, they're just I mean, we, we pretty much ended up with the first 
after the first feasibility study with a giant, you know, a, a pile this big of data, but but not conclusions drawn drawn from data. So, uh, having worked with this consult this consultant that we're working with now previously, and knowing that 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 is an outcome that I will expect because I received it from work, mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident that things will go well. Washing this data with the absence of meaning. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean that just. The way I think. Yeah. Right? I kept looking through, going, okay, well, you know, there's the data that we all did. Yeah. Like, what does that mean? Yeah. And it never came. So, yeah. So that's well, that's the kind of data that we're looking for because, you know, that way, when I ask for a position that is a bilingual outreach coordinator, it's supported by data. Right. It's saying, yes, you should have this because X amount of your folks that use your library or that don't use it that need outreach are Spanish speaking. Therefore, you should have this person doing outreach to that set of the community. So that's what we're looking for. Okay, so it sounds like uh, we'll be able to get a uh, timeline. Yep. And it sounds like we we'll, we'll be able to get an estimate, at least, of dates for stakeholder mm -hmm. meetings to move the process forward, which is great. Okay. The first one will be in August. I just don't know when. So. And are you picturing in person or virtual? I think we're going to have a combo of both, and we should be able to do combinations too, where if some folks get to neither want to participate virtually, they can do so. Is she going to be able to do as many on site activities as she thought? She's, she's willing to come here multiple times. So. Will we meet with her as a board? Is that something that we will? Okay. Um, this is one of those things too, that she, she prefers not to just present the final version of her findings to city council at the end of the project she really likes to she will approach at some point about um, you know once we get to the point where she is she's doing the financial modeling portion she would want to do kind of an interim study session appearance and say you know this is where I see this going and get input at that point if there are, you know if, if people have other questions or think whoa this isn't going in the direction that we want it to go in or that we envision or you know your study is is providing the information that we need. So uh, that worked really well when I worked with her before, and I think it makes a lot of sense to do a midway through check-in so that the, nobody is surprised when the data is presented at the end, and so you get what you get what you know we're paying for. So or what you like. So can I? Because you haven't. You have two little items that jump that are before the Boulder Library mm -hmm. district update, and I think that kind of links to this, doesn't it? The Bochard and Emsley funds do. I mean, that's, I don't envision much of a discussion tonight about this. Uh, but I'm just curious, what, what is Boulder doing in the library district? Do we know? Boulder is, I, I would be very surprised if Boulder doesn't end up with the library district at this point. Um, when? This, Are we in line with them? No. Are no, they ahead of us? They're ahead of us. And this happened, you know, the Bol Boulder's city council was very against the district mm -hmm. concept initially. And, Scott and I both watched the same video of a meeting where they're, you know, saying, our gem, our jewel, we can't lose this. And, I mean, that was, those were the words. Yeah. And now they seem to be, if you've, if you've watched any of the meetings, and I've watched quite a few, and I know Claire, our children's librarian, is, she watches pretty much all of them. And the sentiments have really changed. So I would be, the city council appears to be very in favor of the district there, and I'd say that, and I would say they're heading for the ballot. I know they have to be. I know they have to put on the ballot by August, so that's Do you think it might happen this year? I do. I think there's a possibility. How did, how were they so persuaded? Just I really don't that. I really don't know what happened in between. I, unless you know, I, I never know. I mean you never know what, what people's motivations are. Maybe they have something else and they want to use the library's budget to, you know, debt service for another project. I don't know. Uh, they're looking at a sizable amount. The last time I looked at their and core teams, um, correspondence, they were looking for twenty million dollars. Did they? As a budget. So are they, they eight now. annually? Yeah. Are they looking to expand outside of Boulder? Yes. Uh, uh, to yes. Yeah. They're looking at Taiwan. They're looking at Taiwan. Yeah. They're looking at no, no, they went to Taiwan. Gun Barrel? No, Gun Barrel for sure. They've been promising a they've been promising a bridge in Gun Barrel for a long time. They're looking at expansion, which they're already actually doing part of that on Novo, and expansion I think of maybe other branches oh, that they that are existing that's North Boulder yeah. and then looking at definitely a branch in Barbaro and potentially in Taiwan. 
I just saw something in the paper where they were extending their reach back towards celestial seasonings and stuff mm -hmm. like that with the project. So they're moving. They're moving that way. But that led That's from that led from dead to alive. Huh. Kind of during COVID. So we need to understand what they yeah. what so their boundaries are. We are going to try and speak with um, we talked about that today in our meeting with the consultant and <coughs> We're going to talk to David Farnan, uh, who's the director there, and we're also going to see if we can talk to the woman whose name is escaping me at the moment, but who's kind of the head of their their group that's been uh, working for this. Did you have a director's meeting on the 21st? Or today or we had it. Oh, today you had it? Exactly. Yeah. Just got back from that one. Good day. <laughs> so fun. It's good fun. <laughs> but yes, I think that the, the, this, the whole sentiment turned around. I can send you a couple. I can I can send articles to the whole group. I've sent a couple articles previously that have been fairly recent about what it looks like. So what's the um, assuming that they want to extend the, the geographic footprint of the library district would include the nine one. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Um, so what uh, there's nine watts unincorporated. What's the decision making? process? What's the protocol? I don't know. That's what's what say that's what we need to figure out. Yeah. It's St. Rain Valley School District. It is, which is, which is kind of a natural boundary. It's strange. Yeah. Gun Barrel I don't think is strange at all. No, no, it's it's part 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 but is the, is, would this, is this, you know, would, would, they, would, would they contemplate a vote? Uh, their, their board or their council Authorized proceeding, mm -hmm. didn't they, with the uh, library did. creation of the library district? They did. That was by council vote, not by council public vote. vote. They can't. They can't incur debt without a vote. Nope. Um, do they just arbitrarily cast their net over nine watt and say you are now by fiat you are now going to be in this library district if it's if the district's approved or if the the, the uh, debt service or creation of debt. Uh, is approved by the voters and whatever that geographic. Like I said, is. we have to talk to them. So I mean, we we have not talked to to the folks that are directly involved with this. That's a legal question. It is. And I'd like to know: Is there a way to stop that? <laughs> first thing, first question I've got. It's based on your your tax base, right? I mean, the library district is that's the idea, right? So now it's a dedicated tax. Well, people tax base. Yeah. yeah. It we is. Would, we would benefit from that. Well, it's part I thought of, we kicked that around before. We did. Yeah. And I, I thought I that no. they, they yeah. are sucked in to a larger, you know, if you're included in the vote, the vote goes favorably. I think they are sucked into that, whether they disagree or not. Yeah. They are. Particularly being unincorporated, they don't have any, right. they don't really have any representation. Any. So, yeah, they are they don't technically exist. Or, 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 or <laughs> a, um, an adversarial group either because they're so, you know, so well, I haven't seen the evidence of that yet, but it doesn't seem it doesn't mean that one will develop. I've had experience with this before. Uh, where where you can a vote no group can come out of nowhere. Do you have a sense of Niwa people who live in Niwa what library they're using? Does anyone have a sense they're of that? Well. They're using yeah, they are. Is it and it and the last time we looked at this, which was probably two years ago or so, yeah. it was about equal. Almost no. exactly. It was, that was the one that was the closest. Yeah. 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 Which side is that <laughs> But I, I, I think the corollary analysis to that, all that is is um, are you better off with them or without them? Well, some, some wise person said with <coughs> with the territory comes the service requirements. Yeah, that was me. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, they're not going to do this. They're not going to say, yes, we want to <clears throat> pay. They're not paying for library service right now. And so, so they're not going to say, "Okay, I want to pay for library service." If they're not going, to, if they're not going to expect something out of it, then something is bound to be a branch. Right. 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 So you got to know what that is. So you got to know what it is. I mean, you are yeah. you better off or are you worse off? I mean, you include your area, but are you better off? We need a spy in Boulder. <laughs> <laughs> Boulder operations. So. I mean, we have some, you know, there are some questions down the road, especially that Danny might have too, in, in conjunction with this. And, you know, she's, I know she's talked to some folks at the State Library before, but at, at Kim Center, yeah. Kim Center that we talked to before, there's an attorney that um, 
really is kind of the special district expert in libraries in Colorado that I think we would be able to ask some questions. Yeah, they were willing to help us. He was. No he was willing to just pro bono. He was willing to do pro bono. We didn't actually right. put him on retainer. He just, mm -hmm. no, the deal was if we win, he's our lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you had to pay him money. No, no, no it was pro bono. No, okay, okay. It was basically promising that he would then get all of our business forever after that. And he's, I mean, he's, he's the acknowledged, you know, oh, he's authority, the expert authority, in the state. authority in the state on on library districts. So, I mean, I think that there are some questions that we have legal questions that we could probably pose. Just a new four year answer. That's where I'll go with my new legal career. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Should we look at finding a group that puts this together again. We already sort of, we have a beginning of it, sort of the consultancy, so we will have an expanded group, and I will be asking you asking you for suggestions of folks to be members of that group. But I'm talking about, yeah, I'm talking about, yeah, citizens, yeah. Yeah. residents. That's what we're talking about. You want a council perspective on it? Yeah. Wait, why? If you want a, if you want a really strong negative council reaction, start now. Yeah. That's fine. No, you just said, you're called. No, I get it. We're not there yet. That's why I well, my best yeah. advice is wait till you get a feasibility study. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions on the feasibility study? Three, two, I have one. Motion Ramson funds. We don't have a huge discussion on that right now. Do you have anything for us on that that you want to say? No. Okay. For information. I, that's what I had. I had it yeah. last meeting. We were going to get information. We were trying to get information from the city attorney, the head of finance. Yeah. Uh, we were going to try and get original documents. And, I don't, you uh, know, I can't find the original document. I swear we saw it once, so I'm going to do some more digging for that. And uh, we're going to use those <coughs> input for calls. <coughs> that was my recollection. Well, I know we saw the original order. We did. I, I, I'll go check and see if I got the one for us. So, okay. so just, just to get this off off the dime and you know, out sure. of the way, and I think we can wrap it up. We got so we have new, new guy question. Okay. These are funds that started out. With yeah, you're going to want to know. These, that. these started out with donations years ago. We do spend some of the Emson funds every year in the, the distribution, you know, off the top. Um, mostly, that's not as large. Mostly, we spend it on a few reference books we buy, etc. The Mosher Fund, like, sat around for years. That's the one they found. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. So that one has almost six hundred thousand that can be spent. Mm -hmm. So that's one that we had looked at, especially when you know, you know, we didn't know what happened with COVID, etc. We really looked at um, our project to do an electronic sort using some of that because that project is anywhere from two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars probably. And I mean, there's more in the Mosher Fund. That's just the expendable portion. So, but one of them has restrictions on stuff related to this, visual. This had it, originally it did the Mosher Fund originally back when it was a very small amount was mostly dedicated was originally supposed to be dedicated to. Uh, items, etc., that helped folks with visual impairments, but it's very old. The folks that donated it aren't around anymore, and also uh, with the advent of computers with enlargeable fonts and, and backlit things and, and free braille books, etc., we the libraries just don't have a need for a lot of money for visually impaired services. So, so we checked about that with a couple different sources, and you know, you can you can at this point spend it on something else. Did that take a formal action of this board? That, that was one of the questions. That's a question. I, don't, I don't think so. That wasn't that wasn't the impression that I had from Jim Bowler. So I, so where where this the purpose of this is is at least funds is as Nancy Mankin started that is thousands of dollars. Now there are hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. So as a board, we're trying to create a fiduciary policy to manage these because there's a lot of money. Right? And then also we're trying to repurpose them because their original purpose is no right. longer valid. Okay. And then we're trying to understand who controls that money when all that is repurposed. Currently, we make a request to the city. The city, I guess, gets mayoral, mayoral approval when they cut a check. The mayor? Well, because he has they're to sign the check. Board. It's the thing. Yeah, you have to say, board. please, please, please cut break a check. check. No, I get that, but, but 
but the mayor? <laughs> yeah, it's it's, 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 it is okay. odd. But. I mean, I, I think that's, well, that's why we're, that's we're part of all this. trying trying to move the, the ball okay. forward on is to one, put in some fiduciary responsibility to the board and try and put some control somewhere so that the library can benefit yep. from it. Okay. Okay. So that's the purpose of this one, right? Okay, I'll move on if, if we're done with this one. Uh, Do you want to, this is Jim. This is Jim Gold with his funds, and I asked him about the Mosher fund. He said we rarely have used funds for Mosher. We don't know if we've ever used funds for Mosher. If we do, it would likely be as a transfer to the general fund, so it can budget for those materials for whatever you use for. Danger, danger. No. It is not uncommon, like with any fund, with funding from any friends groups, for us to include that during the year in an additional appropriation. We rarely have included something like that as an original proposed budget method. If it was for an FGE, we would prefer to keep the budget, but we're not spending on staff. So, just for materials that can wait, we would just include it in an in additional appropriation. You're saying so, you move it into the city general fund? What we have to do is appropriate the funds out of the Motion out of the, 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 the city's fund so that we can probably sitting yes, that's exactly it. So, so one of our other issues with all this was is we, wanted, we wanted to do this so that it didn't impact the library's budget. We didn't want, right. we didn't want a certain gamesmanship going on with the fund so that you know we're right. taking assets that could be used for the library somehow, mm -hmm. so they go elsewhere. Or have its uh, Richard supplement as opposed right. to supplant. That's right. a, that's right way of saying it. So I mean, it's it's all. But that's pretty much. We get into the supplement versus supplant thing with our friends all the time. Yeah. Our friends, right? right. We, we have no program budget. Yeah. This is yeah. that you know our friends supply the budget. For example, for all of our programs. You know, when we on those appropriations, right? And we just approved yeah. one for two hundred and twelve million dollars. Yeah. Um, when we get that, the, the funds or the source of the funds or the fund, right, whether it's yeah. grant, state or federal grant, yeah. are all detailed in the enclosure. Yep. So, you know, the, I, I, it would be a surprise to me that this would be a transfer into the general yeah. fund as opposed to authorizing uh, the expenditure of this fund, just like we do dozens of other funds, whether it's a street it's fund or a... I'm just telling you what I got from you. Yeah, it says it would, if we do, it would likely be as a transfer to the general fund so it could budget for those materials. So it doesn't sound like a set in stone policy. That's on the preference that we you know, yeah. talked about. Right. It's, it's a, 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 a how to kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. How to can I manage it? I just, just having watched the city over the last several years, anything that goes into the general fund, <laughs> yeah, it's fair game, man. So. But I think I think a concern though is also, and I have no, and I know I'm completely on board with what Tim said that we are not, you know, targeting. Yes, we're going to be a district because this is what we're just starting to look at. Yeah. But you know, what happens to things, to funds like that, should we become a district? So mm -hmm. I, think that's, I think that's a concern whether or not they would follow. So was it a gift to the city per se or a gift? Like, you know, it, it's not. It's what it's not too early to do is start the generator. A really good list of all those questions. Yeah. 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 Right. So nothing like when somebody runs up and says, "We forgot to change the the voice message, the greeting." Sure. Around. <laughs> that I can do it. Well, I'm so just saying, yes. start building that list now. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to move on here. Uh, little free libraries. Uh, since there wasn't a friends meeting, uh, I don't think anything nothing new no. came out of that. And I think last time we were saying. It's really going to be deferred to August 29th. It's going to be deferred till August, but the front, the friends initially, and they're working on their, they're reworking their bylaws because right now their bylaws do not allow them to do that. Because right now they have a sole purpose in their bylaws of raising money for the free use by the library. Okay. So. So they're looking at. So, they're looking at that. So they this. Have, their bylaws are with their attorney. So this one is is the board funded uh, a number of little three or three libraries and we populated and right. books from the friends and um, a lot of those libraries got vandalized so we're asking multiple friends. They yeah. all got vandalized. Baseball bat, baseball bat sure. So we're asking, really? asking the friends to, you know, 
start them and give it a shot. Get them up and yeah. maintain them and um, you know, talk to us about good places to put them, like disadvantaged areas. Oh, so we can show video cameras. Yeah, though, it is. Or there should be a discussion surrounding that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. What was the stuff that's not checking out? I don't it's like a body cam. It's a little library. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I have any questions. <laughs> I think it was the uh, got back to the stocking issue. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, well, isn't that like it's the new member of this board that's responsible for keeping those things? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what are we talking about here? <laughs> that, that comes up on the item B. Is it the new secretary? Okay. I think next. Right. Oh, oh, no, but in all seriousness, when we started the Little Free Library, is our council liaison was very big at Tinkerbell and very instrumental in building was the Little Free Library. Yeah. 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 And so now that we do have another connection to Tinkerbell, oh, <laughs> I mean, I also, in terms of maintaining that, I'm saying sure being very serious. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm on the board of Tinkerbell. Yeah. So. And Jeff kind of works for me now. Yeah, I think, so, the, right, I, so. I think it was like the, the maintenance of was it was you know literally nail hammers and nails. Yeah, right? actually, <laughs> Jeff built one. I know he built several. He built several. Yeah. We were yeah. talking about several inside locations though, and when we started sure, talking about the sure few months, would, those buildings were not open. They were open. Right. So that that was a table of discussion because so, of COVID, because folks didn't want us to bring over stuff to their indoor locations. So like so is the question here? Can we put this on Scott? Taking care of no, the question, the, the question, question is, is the <laughs> question is like to see what the funds found out from their attorney about okay. whether or not they what did their okay. participation. We have a meeting Wednesday. But I am willing to okay. be that liaison. That's good to know. On. We can probably start a project up again to build more. I would just put them in different well, spots. That, I don't that, know if it's that, more. Might it's more. that might be a good project Especially to do in yeah. conjunction with the friends. Yeah. yeah. If they say they will start and they're yeah. willing to build, that would be awesome. Building right. and they will materials come that are then built for And I have steel. <laughs> and the theory was it was probably a bunch of kids that vandalized them, and now that was you know pre COVID. Remember so the geese? A long time. Yeah. That's what happened to the geese. Same yeah. thing. We had, you know, remember the geese? Yeah. So he's looking at me like, what the heck are you talking about? I don't know. So we had geese, the same the, goose, the, big goose. You know that part? Oh, the big thing. Yes. We painted once, and the kids would go around and trash them all. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Is that why they kind of disappeared? They flew south. We had a special piece of art. We had done these big metal like hands like it. this at Tinkerbell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Huge. And we put it down by the church on Main Street and smashed. smashed. Some guy jumped on it and stood That's on it. Really awesome. Jumped up and down. We had a camera of it doing it. It was all those guys. So. Oh, yeah. And so we took, it out of, we took it out of there. It's sitting over in a corner of Tinkerbell. It's a sad thing. Can't have nice things. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move along here. I, uh, any more questions on the Boulder Library District update? Do you have anything more for us there? I would as soon as I get it, I'll okay. go back to the power of the meeting. And I think we've already welcomed Scott. Um, discussion about board offices and officers. So um, the bylaws say that a second meeting after um, council makes a change to the board composition the, this process we will be talking about offices and who's going to fill that. Um, we have uh, currently um, the way we're uh, structured is um, Cynthia is our secretary, Katie was our secretary, Kathy who resigned was our friends of the library liaison. Catherine's the vice chair. That's the newest member, usually. <laughs> so, um, and we had talked previously at last meeting about trying to rotate the representation to the friends, just to, you know, to leave the burden on anyone in the picture. Oh, that's not the case, not explicitly. Right. So, um, do we want to open that up for discussion again? Do we want to? Think about that. How do we want to do that? Do you want to volunteer? <laughs> I was waiting for that one. Dude. <laughs> well, there's a tradition on this board that the new member is the secretary. Yeah. And 
we've already had Cynthia. So. <laughs> yes, you, you I, I, I did. Unlucky yeah. timing for you. It was unlucky <laughs> timing. <laughs> so, so, so Cynthia graciously volunteered to be the secretary in lieu of sticking Catherine with the job going Twice forward now. since she was <laughs> continue to be the young person. But. Mm -hmm. So what's your point here? You can be secretary or you can be president. Oh, 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 I see. I get a choice. Okay. I'll take friends. <laughs> if you're already doing secretary, I'll take friends. I really like well, your suggestion. I don't dislike the suggestion of rotating. Yeah. 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 I just didn't want to go to two meetings every month. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. a week, it's just not honestly feasible. Yeah. But I didn't dislike going to friends meetings. I found it very informational for yeah. me. And actually, they have had a lot of turnover and they've got some new folks that are kind of breathing new life into the friends organization and so so let's discuss that so, do, do you want to do it do you want to continue to do it or do you want to help or do you guys i don't want to do it that ever exclusively yeah so you want help yeah you want to split it do you want to split it do you want to go one is one anybody one? else interested yeah, i guess i would i could do so if, if you know once a month right so yeah. I could do every three or four months. I could do every Let's four months. I could do quarterly. Yeah, and that's if, a good idea. And if anybody that ever three has, people. and realize if anyone, if there's ever a night where somehow no one's it's available, I'm there anyway, yeah. right. so yeah. I can take the notes. Perfect. Would I go? Oh. Does that oh. mean we go too or no? Because <laughs> I'm starting law school. So. Then you know you want to. I don't know if I can do any extra. No, Mark was exempted yeah. because he has extra, <laughs> extra work. It sounds like the three of us. It would us be the three of us, yeah. Well, I don't feel forget about that. I feel like I should be included. Yeah. Okay, okay so, so let me yeah. recap where I think we're at. So S Cynthia's going to stay the secretary. We're going to sure. rotate <laughs> The friends among three people. Well, I'm here maybe four. Five. I just want it to be equitable. I don't want to set up a system where like I get special privileges. Just well, I don't think it's special privileges. I mean, unless you feel like it's special privileges. Yeah, I just so, want so to make sure everyone feels so, comfortable with that. So you're going to dive in, so we'll rotate it among four people because I don't mind backing up. So. We could do three, and then we'll. I'm sure we'll need some. How about I can be a sub? Point. You can be yeah. an alternate. I can be an alternate. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So we're the three regulars. So three. Every month we'll just rotate. So it is. Regulars not so it is. So it is. Yeah, so it is. 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 The fourth Wednesday. Well, that, that's they're important they're because, because fourth we'll Wednesday. talk about next board meeting. So. But I'll be there. I mean, I I was planning to go this week, so I guess this coming week. So I guess we don't need to start. Yes, I am. Okay. okay um, so I think we're set then on the board officers, correct? Can I yeah. recap just to make sure I got this? Um, so three of us regularly rotate meetings, continue as vice chair and alternate for Prince of Library. And other positions stay the same. Yep. That's starting in August. So Not when is that full meeting? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll say okay. I'll, I'll, okay. that I'll handle next month. Yeah. Yeah. Although actually, so we do summertime might actually good if you need. <laughs> okay, I could jump in. I'd be there anyway. Okay. Well, I would stick with the first start. meeting, so you can kind of intro that we're doing this, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'll do August twenty fifth. Okay. And then yeah, for, hmm. when is law school? Law school starts August. Wait. In what law school? Do you? Oh, yeah. Congrats. Thank you. Good luck. I'm also teaching still, so. <laughs> You're kidding. You've got to try to do both. And you know what? The GA count for a family of five years in this town? You are going to not teach and go to law school. I'm going to teach and go to law school. And raise a family. Raise a family and run for office someday, so watch out. There you go. We'll get that. It's, uh, it's a busy time. Or do you do it? Yeah. Okay, so uh, the next board meeting set up for August 23rd, which is the fourth Monday. Do you want to put a proposal on the table? If, because my problem is that that conflicts directly with the yeah. Tinkerbell. Okay, Mondays fourth. in general or? Well, it's the fourth Monday of every oh. month and it has been for eight years now. So, do we get a different Monday? There's 14 of them. <laughs> That's the problem, is it's a much larger board. Oh. Um, so I think it, I have a lot less of, even though I'm the founder of the place, I don't think they're going to listen to me on this one. <laughs> so, 
because I, I brought it up and everyone was like, yeah, so, so is there a way that we, so I did want to bring that up, is there a way we could move this? Well, I, I checked the bylaws and I think in the bylaws we just say we'll have meetings once monthly. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we haven't, but the city has on their website they do, yeah. Mondays, fourth Mondays. Yeah, but I can make that. For, for the public. That's new for the public's knowledge. Um, Rampant public participation. Yeah. Next, <laughs> next month, I have a personal <laughs> issue with the fourth Monday anyway. Ah, that's good. So, can we do the um, third Monday? Sorry. I mean, there are five no, Mondays in August. Yeah, so if, August. If, <laughs> it, it's, it's really probably you that are going to drive this because yeah. what's your schedule look like? Hey, the truth is, for the rest of this year, you're going to get. We will do reassignments in terms of liaisons after the November election cycle. Mm -hmm. So um, who knows what, what it's going to look like at that point in time. But but but, but interesting for this cycle, um, the, the, I'm also a liaison to the golf committee. They don't meet every month, but they meet on the same Monday. Oh, <laughs> they meet on this Monday? Yeah, the but they meet Monday? at 630. Okay. So oh. so what I've done is met with them till 630. And, and since it's yeah. been virtual, it's been easy enough to say, yeah. see ya. Right? Now I'm going to the library with you. Frankly, if I was going to Established priorities. <laughs> this was the plan for it. So. Um, so anyway, I've had to manage it that way. But it hasn't been a big problem because the library or the golf board doesn't meet very often. Well, if, if we and, said, and it's not right. This is the only. I don't know. The end of Monday meetings. Oh, so, this, yeah. so if we said the third Monday, no problem. Because I think some months have five Mondays. Um, you're comfortable with yeah. that. How about the rest of the? I mean, that's. In August, that's the night before school starts. Yeah, so that's, that's tricky for me. So it's just for the August one. Yeah. Just, just, just for August 16th. Yeah. School starts on the 17th. So do we want to make uh, the switch to the third Monday's effective in September? I think that's fine. Should we meet on the 30th also? Because then that would be, then that's going to be really close to the end. It, it, it doesn't solve the August problem. Right. Right? Let's take these one at a time. Okay. So or if, if the group is okay, the um, then can we have a, a motion 20th? to move it to the third Monday of the month? What's that? I move we move it to the third Monday of the month. Good, good. you're learning fast. Do we have a second? Second. Yeah. All in favor? Right. And thank you very much, all of you. Yeah, so it's even better for the friends, though, because now we won't have two meetings. That's true. Stop in the same meeting. Win-win. Okay. Well, it depends on how the dates fall. Yeah, because now some, some months I have the Monday night and the Wednesday night. So and some months I have Monday night and Tuesday night for council and Wednesday night. So, those is better. <laughs> so, Monday night. Okay, okay so September. now let's circle back and do August. Um, we can keep it on the 23rd, but I can't make the 23rd. So we'd have but our vice chair can. So you get two members out on the 23rd then? Because Scott, Scott and I can actually do that. Because we moved, we're doing a special election in August, which moved it um, a week. So that one month. So in August you can do the fourth Monday? Yes. Or we could do the third Monday. Or, 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 or we can have a friend of the board. That's what I was thinking at the end. That makes sense. I think that makes sense. So we can move it to, what do you look like on the 30th? That is not fair now. Not good. No, that is actually, well, it's 6 p.m. meeting. So it's over at 2 p.m. on the 30th. But we can have. We generally keep it to an hour. Uh, possible a little bit later on, so I'd say leave it. Seems so seems we'll move August, August gets start. moved to the 30th? August 30th, okay. So can I get a motion on that? I mean, Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're okay on the 30th? Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to cancel the other panel orders, but that's okay. Okay. So then. <laughs> September 4 would be the third. <laughs> that's always okay. okay. something. It's like one last that's deal, right? Sure. <laughs> so, that, somebody, so who sends out the notification on that? So, so just a couple other cleanup items here. Um, 
Can we get an updated contact list with this information, mm -hmm. please? Yeah, I'm going to have Tracy do it tomorrow. Okay, great. That, that is already oh. on the list. And send that around. What's yeah. the rule about the no replying all? You just can't reply. Right. I mean, no. Yeah, yeah, you, I think you, I messed you, up. You, you, you shouldn't actually, do that. You're right? actually yeah. allowed yeah. to reply all if it's just about course. something like a meeting date. Oh, okay. So that's, that's an okay reply all. You can't have discussions on reply all. That's you, can okay. a, you can do a meeting date. These are open. I'm going to do it. That was okay. And then, uh, can we get the bylaws described? You sure can. And um, a couple items to think about for the next meeting. Uh, we had talked about staff attendance. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to start. Okay, that, they want to start it next we'll month. Just, so we'll just carve out time in the agenda. We were doing that well, back when I first started. Yeah, I remember that. I was but in the board's, a couple of those but the board's good if we do this out of the staff. So they didn't talk and say anything. We've been. We yeah. Have. You were well, here yet? Okay. So well, that'll change. No. Yeah. <laughs> so please, please, interact, just please interact with our nice staff members so I don't have to do an interview yeah. with them. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you wanted a tour tonight, Cynthia. Yeah, but, and, you know, but I wasn't able to. Yeah. So. Um, I'll give you a tour whenever you want. Just let me know. Yeah. Do you want to do it on an ad hoc basis or do you want to try and set something it up? It doesn't matter. I'll give people a tour whenever they want. We'll do it on an ad hoc basis. I'm here. I'm here. Pretty much. Do it. <laughs> it is your job. <laughs> is there an electronic copy of the bylaws that could be yeah, sent to all it. of us? Yeah, I can send it. I was yeah, you might as well send that to all of us. I was, I was planning to do that. Thank you. Um, any uh, <coughs> comments or uh, concerns from the board? Happy to be here. Thank you so much. I guess I just, I just have something stuck in my craw. I just don't feel a lot. I don't want to be in competition with the arts performing arts. You're not. I just feel like there was a weird vibe around that. And just for future, like put a pin in it, but like the idea that we're all competing for the same pot of money and somehow we're going to be pitted against people who believe in the arts. I don't think we will. Just, like, just, just the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just because don't want to see that. And, and I was in attendance, okay. the meeting that Tim talked about, I was there. Okay. The meeting that we had last week. And yeah. it was me and Kim and Kim and I are friends, the museum director, and mm -hmm. we're all we're all working toward the same goals. Okay. I mean, so we're kinda of, you know, we're looking at this if this is you know, here's like here's the kind of we're kind of the sports leisure culture yeah. area. So I mean there, okay. there there are some different like right now community services is kind of some, kind of a big amalgamation yeah. of different stuff so, stuck together. And and so, you know, I think that there's a natural synergy between yeah. Obviously, education, arts, culture, yeah, and even and recreation. So I, I think, I think we're actually, I feel, I feel like we're much closer to moving in the same direction. Than we were originally. And, and, and the practical side is, I think it's easier for the city to sell when it bundles all that together. Sure. Right. And then they, you know, they get this windfall pot of cash from the bond issue and stuff. Like okay. that. And also, you know, this is where libraries kind of kind of ride the coattails of some of these other revenue producing entities and end up with better funding. Mm -hmm. But what libraries are, are the, the feel good entities that attract some folks that wouldn't naturally go for some of those other issues. More than that's, feel good. And that's, well, and the it's, public it's good. yes, it is a public good, but it's also, I mean, we were thrown into the, the Ice Palace you know, the, the, the consultant's analysis of that without, you know, we didn't know we were going right. at the time, but, but, you know, he analyzed things and said, you know, here's much, here's how much more likely yeah. this measure is to pass if the, if the library is thrown in. Well, that happens, you know, you look at the, the public scale of approval or whatever it's called that, that, that happens and we're always towards the top, so. But there so, really wasn't much in there for no, no, like, no, but I'm just saying that. But uh, libraries are often kind of thrown as, in there a sweetener. as a sweetener to the pot. Yeah, but we also, don't sell our name recognition. <laughs> but also, though, I mean, you know, we're like this, athletes. That's right. And so you're looking at in a complex which which offers a performing arts center and, and various other facilities. You know, it is really nice. Personally, I think that the library should be built first in such a complex because you you say because that what that says to the community is yeah. is. Here's the equalizer. We care about everybody. We're putting an entity in first that we're not charging for. Mm -hmm. But on the practical side, if you build a new library, you're going to get at least two thousand, if not more, people a day that come in and get used to going to that location, and then they'll naturally check out everything else. That's right. 
So I think there's a real synergy with this whole with this whole yeah. group. But I'm, I'm dubious. I don't feel taken advantage. It includes everybody. Yeah. I'm, I'm skeptical about that. I mean, I think a board for the library and a board for the art district make more sense than a giant board. Um, then, then you're I haven't had any conversation. Then, you, then you're kind of back, you know, with the city structure, and I don't think that's that is going to be. Yeah. Well, well, so what is what's that. triggering that? Right? Uh, just a just a concern when it all gets bundled and somebody says, well, let's create a separate cultural district oh, or okay. something oh, like that to manage it all and schedule it and do whatever. Well, I don't as a as a yeah. practical legal matter, I don't think I don't that would be an option. Happen. You could have a you could have a, yeah. a cultural arts district in a board, but that wouldn't replace a, a library district board. You could library. Yeah, and then, you know, that's another question, obviously, is what would happen if this is part of a larger right. entity, if we were to become a district, and how, how does that fit how in with, with, with everything else run by a municipality? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be complex, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, but, Kathy, just so you know, the, the, the performing arts folks uh, have been cautioned not to want to compete with the library. Oh, the yeah. Library. Okay. The, yeah. The, the point. It's everyone's opinion. Yeah, yeah, the point Nitsch was making is that the last time we, in case you read about us abandoning our quality of life indicator, that's not true either. The last time we did a survey in 2018, we collected a lot of data on quality of life indicators. Yeah, and right. Um, yeah. And it just so happens that the library comes out as the most highly regarded yeah. institution in Longmont. Right. And it has in every one of those yeah. surveys. So the, the, the suggestion to the performing arts folks is you might not want to compete with the most highly regarded institutions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You might want to figure out how to make common cause, and they get that. Yeah. Right? And and just to finish the sentence of the idea, the reason we didn't, we do that every other year. And we didn't do it in 2020 because we thought maybe in collecting those kind of data in the worst pandemic in 100 years yeah. wouldn't be a good time to make long-term policy programs. It's really reflective of the but. But we didn't do it, and people have short memories. Why did you do that survey? Well, well so that said, pandemic, we're almost trying to survive. Okay, well, thank you. I just need to put it out there. Any other comments from the board? Uh, with that, call it adjourned. Okay, all right. Good luck. Oh, thank you. Yeah, a, a, I think I have to like my building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, you know, oh, I'd be fun to talk to you about it sometimes since you're doing.